He's still the only player to win two Grand Slams. These days, Rod enjoys the quiet life at home in California, where Nine's US correspondent Robert Penfold paid him a visit. So Rod, something really significant here, obviously. Wimbledon. This is the replica of the, uh, the gold trophy. Let's hope it's in here. <laughs> it's still in the packing. <laughs> nice. Woo, OK. At his home in California on this very morning, Rod Laver has just been delivered the prize of all his prizes, a one-off replica of the Wimbledon Trophy. That's it. To mark his Grand Slam win a half a century ago. That's what everybody strives to have. That's beautiful. It? It's a beautiful it's, piece of work. It's right up to it's the pineapple. It's a huge honour to uh, have this. Time to relax a little for the now 81-year-old after a huge year where to mark his extraordinary achievements. He won 29 straight matches and almost seven straight tournaments. In 1962 and 1969, when he won all four Grand Slam titles in a year, a feat never equal to this day, Rod this year was invited to crown the present champions at the Australian, the French and the US Open. And if that's not enough, Rod, with his co-author Larry Reiter, has written a book about that glorious time in the 50s and 60s, the golden era, when the Aussies ruled the tennis world. Looking at Wimbledon, you're looking at the French, and you're looking at the US and Australian, all those titles that are, and the names are down on the titles, they're all Australians. And so, you know, it's, it, it is pretty amazing that we've got so many great Australians and, and, and great rep representatives from Australia. But from page one on in the book, you can see that Rod is out to make a point. It's not all about him. Reading the book, it's almost as if you're saying, look, I've had a lot of attention in my life, but I want to give some attention to these others, these other people who were these guys who are out there who you looked at as a kid and who actually probably got you to the level that you did. Would that be right? Yeah, I think they're, they're the ones that got me involved in the in the game of tennis just purely because I love it, love it. You look at the likes of Frank Sedgman and Lou Hoden, Ken Rosewall, Ashley Cooper, you know, Roy Emerson, you know, Fred Stolle. There's a whole group of players. You know, I think they gave me the opportunity as a tennis player to get out there and improve my game and get and get better at it. And I think that's the attitude that you know, these players brought to the table. I think there's seven or eight of them a Wimbledon champion. Ken Rosewell, another great friend of yours and a great competitor. Do you think he made you a better player? Boy, the way you said that, I think, I, I think he did make me a better player. He also reminisces about the stunning performances of Yvonne Goolagong Corley and the only other Australian owner of the Grand Slam, Margaret Court. The arrival of Newcomb and Roche brought that golden era to an end. But they were controversial times for the players. One by one, all the big Australian names turned professional. Rod Laver continually was persuaded by the tennis establishment to remain an amateur, but eventually he decided he too would turn pro for one very good reason. He had all the trophies, the glamour of being the top amateur, but he needed to earn a decent living. OK, well, who's going to feed me then? you know, 10 years and 20 years from now. And so, you know, that was the, that was the way the game was set up. And I think the amateur officials were thinking, you know, what we've done so much for you. And, and I'm thinking, well, hey, I think I've done so much for you. At the Davis Cup, 10 and 15,000 people in the stadium. And I'm on 25 shillings a day. But where did that money go? You can take the boy out of Australia, but take a peek in his backyard here in California, and it's just like home. Home, of course, being Rockhampton, where in the 1950s, his mum and dad also grew tomatoes in a veggie patch. A time when Rod and his mates played tennis, they played cricket and footy on any flat piece of land they could find. Did you ever dare to dream when you were 14 that you thought one day you'd be holding this cup up? No, I never dreamt that. I never dreamt I, I would one day own one of these trophies or have my name, you know, on the on the trophy. But if you play hard, you work hard, yeah, and you, you know, 
put the effort in, practice, and the good things happen. Oh, yes. And even though he didn't dare dream that big back in the day, it oh, certainly God. happened. Uh, you're number one seed. You've got a pretty formidable... Freckly-faced kid from Australia who took on the world and won. And won again. And again. So we've got the French Open trophy here, also won by your mate uh, Lou Hode. No, that's true, yep. Tell us that story <laughs> about how he eventually won despite what he did the night before. Lou has been known to enjoy a few beers and uh, so he'd, he'd had a late night and somewhere along the line, you know, his rackets got misplaced and he says, you, you, you use a Dunlop Max Play? And I said, yeah, I do. And he said, yeah, give me a look at one of these. And so he looked at him and he says, yeah, I can't, I could, can't find mine. And, and, <laughs> that's, and a, so, that's a big hangover. <laughs> and so, so he said, yeah, can yeah this this one this is this one feels good, yeah I'll I'll use it, and he he, he beats Sven Davidson in the final of the French Championships with my racket. <laughs> On a personal note, in his book, Rod pays tribute to the wives and partners who, in the 50s and 60s, were often left at home for months, and his late wife Mary, who died in 2012, a real hero, he says. And, yeah, of course, my wife was very pregnant at that stage. Yeah, those sort of things happen. <laughs> I'm sure the wives must feel it is forever when they aren't able to see us four and five months out of the year. You speak in the book about how bravely Mary battled on, you know, without you being here. And then, of course, sadly, she passed on as well. Uh, but you've been able to re-establish a new relationship. And I think a lot of people see you at the tennis in the last year with a, with a new friend as well. How's that all going for you? I found a, a partner and, uh, you know, we're getting along extremely well and she able, she's able to come with me. At and Susan can times. travel can travel with you. And so yeah. I'm able to, uh, you know, show her a little of Australia and the rest of the world. What was it like for this year? And that always Great. includes a trip back home to the Australian Open. And now enjoying seeing the new generation of players particularly Ash Barty, doing so well. You know, it's nice to see that now I am for myself fortunate to see her win the, the French Championships, you know, this year. And, I mean, she's very talented and, and she's got a huge future in front of her. Get him out of here. No, 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 we're not it's getting him. Of... Isn't it curious when he sees a great talent that needs a little taming? Yeah, you know, Nick, Nick is, you know, his own worst enemy, certainly. The critical moments. And... Yeah, you know, at the Labor Cup. Yeah, you know, he's played in it a few times now and playing unbelievably well. And behavior is impeccable. And so... So I he think, can do I it. I think is, it's possible. He could be one of the best players in the world. And, and unfortunately, you know, this, this is stopping him from going up the ladder very far. And you know, I think there's always that opportunity for you know, young players coming along and there was a lot of good young players that Australia has got and the thought is, you know, if you don't dream and, and have aim, aim your sights high, you'll always fall low. So that, I think, is the one thing that you know, you'd like to feel that the, these guys that, that are working hard now is their dream is way up here and you, know, you, you can get there you know, if you're prepared to put that effort in. And here's the proof. Yeah, and that, that, that certainly is, uh, it certainly is for me. <laughs> what a great story. Two legends having a chat there. The Golden Era is available now in all good bookstores.